The NYPD routinely tells the public, if you see something, say something. But in this case, Officer Jonathan Munoz saw something, and according to surveillance video and prosecutors, said something else that was anything but the truth. First, let's show you what really happened. Officer Munoz approached a woman on the sidewalk in March of last year when her friend, Jason DeSisto, grabbed a cell phone and tried to record the encounter. Officer Munoz on the left and two of his partners can be seen grabbing DeSisto's arm and going for his phone. The officers eventually detained and cuffed the 21-year-old, put him in the back of a patrol car, and tossed the cell phone onto the street before pulling off. Now, let's move on to what Officer Munoz actually wrote in his report. It's clear he must not have known La Casa del Mofongo restaurant, where the stop and frisk encounter happened, has not one, but three surveillance cameras. Because Officer Munoz stated in his official report that DeSisto went on the offensive, lunged, and tried to punch him. DeSisto was even criminally charged with disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. Without the video in this case, that police statement would have been the only thing that the district attorney would have been able to rely on. Daniel Sanchez of the Justice Committee says Officer Munoz's false account is not uncommon. We hear from the community all the time and we, we see these false arrests happening. And nine times out of ten, it's the officer's word against the community member. I saw one police officer push somebody and I've always been told if something like that's going on, it's important to have an objective source of data for what happened. Within seconds, though, an officer grabs Clement's phone from him. It got ripped from my hands, and as I turned to see who ripped it, another officer slammed me into the railing outside. He says the next thing he knows, he's being thrown down. And they threw me to the ground and started throwing their knees into me. However, the official police version differs. In the report linked to Clement's arrest, the cop says he arrested him only after Clement jumped on another officer in the part of the surveillance Clement provided to the Nine News investigators. That does not appear to be the case. That's in the report, yet in the video, we're not seeing that. You know, Police spokesperson uh, Elgene McNeely would not say if there's additional surveillance video that might support the officer's claim. Clement's charges remaining after forbidden battery on an officer and resisting an officer. He says police have still not returned his cell phone. 15 year old Austin DeCaro never imagined his habit of taking his camcorder everywhere would come in so handy on an evening several months ago. I saw this random guy telling us to sit on the curb. I didn't know if he was a cop or not. I decided I should record it. The teen and a couple of friends had been crossing a park in Hanover Township, New Jersey, just after dusk. A black car drove up and a cop in plain clothes confronted them. And I gave him my name and then he realized I had a camera in my hand. Turn that video camera off right now or it's going to be mine forever. Why? No. You no. get off of me. You get off of me. And he tackled me to the ground, handcuffed me, threw my camera. <laughs> The camera down on the ground still records the sound. Why are you being so mean right now? We didn't do anything wrong. You weren't sassing him. You weren't mouthing off. I told him he was mean after, like, that was after I got tackled. Now you're going to get charged. Now you're going to what? Um, you're what? Having a video camera? DeCaro's parents were stunned. They were going to charge him with obstruction. Vandalism. I'm certainly glad my son was rolling the video camera or he would have had a whole mess of charges that, uh, you know, were, were, were just lies. The police department declined to comment. The California police officer who shot this man in the back and killed him. All these police officers who were recorded tasing, punching, or shoving unarmed citizens, none of them served any prison time. But Michael Allison, who recorded law enforcement officials in public, he faces up to 75 years in prison. 75 years in prison, and, and, and it's, it's just so unbelievable. Allison could spend the rest of his life behind bars. The 42-year-old is out on bail, preparing to stand trial. It's the first time in my entire life I've ever been arrested, 
or, or accused of a crime or anything. Chief Ackman never returned our calls about arresting Allison on eavesdropping charges. Similar incidents have happened to other Americans. It's illegal right now what you're doing. They eventually got their recordings back and posted them on YouTube. And it's a felony if you're taping. You guys are public. And recording. A dozen states are using eavesdropping and wiretapping laws to arrest people who record audio of law enforcement. I'm not shutting it off. Officer, well, you going to jail. That's for recording on-duty authorities in public or even on your own property. Just, this is my front yard. I'm just recording what you're doing. This woman was arrested and dragged out of her front yard for recording police. Why? Turn around. One man was even arrested for recording officers inside his own home. It can even happen in your own car. This man and his girlfriend pulled over to record this fatal police shooting in South Florida. He got to be dead now. As they drove away, the man recording police was ordered out of his car at gunpoint. Police smashed his cell phone, but they didn't destroy the memory card, so the video survived. She was a key witness in one of the most notorious excessive force cases against police in recent South Florida history. But just days after testifying against a police officer, Jessica Mooney was arrested herself and was herself badly beaten by law enforcement officers. And now she tells her story for the very first time to Local 10 investigator Bob Norman in a report you'll see only on Local 10. A homeless man pushed down, then slapped by a Fort Lauderdale police officer. Get up. It was a video seen around the world and it led to a highly publicized trial. He showed aggression towards me. For Officer Victor Ramirez, 24-year-old Jessica Mooney was there. Her boyfriend shot the video, and she testified at that trial. Not guilty. But just eight days after the officer's acquittal in March, she says it happened to her. The allegation was that she handed her child to a um, stranger, hold the child. Eventually, she was arrested for neglect. During fingerprinting at the jail, she claims a deputy named Amanda Marino was verbally abusing her. I asked her for her badge number or her name. She smashed my face on the fingerprinting thing. That's when three or four more deputies jumped in, but her memory is hazy. I don't know whether I lost consciousness or if my body just went into shock. I, I believe I had a footprint on my rib cage cuts everywhere inside my mouth from just being brutalized. There is surveillance video of the incident, but officials are refusing to release it, citing a recent legal opinion from the Office of Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi, who says the release of such video compromises government security. The state attorney's office, citing a lack of evidence, chose not to file charges against any of the deputies in the case. You're going away. You're going to be arrested for trespassing. The problem is that often the watchmen don't want to be watched. In Jones County, Mississippi, a highway patrolman told Pete Ayer, stop your RV. Pete's an activist who likes to videotape encounters with authorities. Yes, sir. Open that side door for me, man. Turn that camera off, please. What's that? You filming? Yeah. Turn it off. How come? Are you filming me? Yes. Turn it off for me. He'd broken no traffic laws, but Maybe the police were suspicious of shirtless, tattooed Pete and his big trailer with New Hampshire plates. Pete's friend filmed the encounter and said, I would like to keep everybody accountable in this situation. Apparently this officer didn't like that. Okay. Another arrived and said, I'm not shutting it off. Officer, are well, you going to jail? Excuse me? Sir. The cops grabbed his camera and arrested him and his friends. They held us in jail, wouldn't let us make phone calls. After about 12 hours, the police let them go. They charged me with uh, possession of a beer in a dry county because there was one unopened beer in the refrigerator of the RV. They had nothing else to stick on me. They couldn't charge him with filming the police because that's legal. And that's a good thing. Just outside my office, a cop claimed a bicyclist rode into him on purpose. But then this video turned up and showed that the officer was the aggressor. <laughs> Maybe video like this is why some don't want to be filmed. You guys need something? I'm just, this is my front yard. I'm just recording what you're doing. It's my right. Actually, not from the sidewalk. This is my yard. In Rochester, New York, when Emily Good heard police stopping a driver outside her house, she went out on her front lawn to film the encounter. 
One officer didn't like that. It's behind us officers when we're doing a, a traffic stop. I'm allowed to stand in my yard. Well, stand in your house. I'm allowed to stand in my yard. I'm going to stay in. I was in cotton pajamas. You could tell I was holding nothing. I, I don't think that there's any reason to feel threatened. All I have is a camera. I'm clearly wearing nothing. I have no weapons. It does not matter. You know what? You're going to go to jail. I'm observing what they're doing and they're arresting me. I don't understand what's going on. The officer took her to jail and charged her with obstructing governmental administration. I did nothing. I did nothing. I think that the young police officer is high on his power. High on his power is a little harsh. He's doing his job. No, it's not his job to take people, uh, uh, observers, from their own property and put them in jail. A month later, Emily put this video online. It was viewed thousands of times, and some viewers criticized the police. So you post the video on YouTube, and they come back. In uniform, four officers. Police showed up outside a meeting of Emily and her friends and started writing tickets for parking violations, like parking farther than 12 inches from the curb. Can I see it? Can I see the ruler? Her friend taped that. OK, that's 12 inches from the curb. After the media picked up on the story, the police chief said his officer's actions were inappropriate. Charges against Emily were dropped, but no officer was ever punished. They never are, as far as we know, even when they arrest news cameras. Go away, go away now! Go, go away go? now! Bill Dads tried to film a police you're pursuit. All right, you're going away. Okay, I'm, I'm walking away, but I'm, I'm asking you, you know, because where it's can I because to... it's an active scene and you're leaving. Okay, where can I All right, no filming? place. I go away, no. He went away. He moved across the street, but then the officer drove up to him there. Sergeant, I told PIO they told me to go back to the Put it down. Open. Put it down. Put it down. Put it down. You're under arrest. They charged Phil with obstructing government. Did you obstruct the government? Absolutely not. At the point I was arrested, I was probably a thousand feet away from the officers. Charges were dropped, but again, the officer was never punished. None of the officers who arrested Pete, Emily, or Phil would talk to us, but the head of one police union sent us this written comment. He says, this has become a serious safety issue. I'm afraid something terrible will happen. Well, the opposite is true, because if the, if the officers are doing the right thing, the video's going to show that. Cell phone video captured this tense confrontation at a bus stop between a student and a Los Angeles police officer. The incident landed 18-year-old Jeremy Marks in jail, facing a possible seven-year prison sentence. The problem? Marks isn't the boy being pushed and shoved by the police officer. His crime? He was uh, videotaping an officer abusing a 15-year-old child. On that day, Jeremy's only weapon, his cell phone camera. He was one of several students who videotaped the altercation between the campus cop and the young student but Jeremy had no idea that this simple act would land him in jail for the next eight months. The video shows Mark standing near the officer with his cell phone out. He was arrested a short time later and was stuck in jail because his family could not afford the $155,000 bail set by the judge. Now this is not the first time that someone has faced major legal trouble after capturing a police officer on video. Anthony Graber posted this YouTube video of a Maryland police officer pulling a gun on him. Days later, Graber was arrested and faced up to 16 years in prison for recording a cop. Jeremy Marks's mother is hoping felony charges against her son, including the charge of attempted lynching for supposedly shouting kick her ass during the incident, will also be dismissed. The charge of lynching, that was, I, I was just floored by that. Because I, I know what it means to African-American people. Marx is not speaking on the advice of his family and attorney. His freedom of expression may be dead anyway in this age of technological advancement. The fact that police departments are cracking down on officers being videotaped is not lost on the West Coast, where the Oscar Grant killing is still fresh in people's minds. Police rarely go on trial for violence, committed while on duty. But this video shook the nation and was a key piece of evidence in the trial of the officer who shot an unarmed black man. 
even with the video, the officer who pulled the trigger was given what many consider an outrageously lenient sentence. No, it is not fair and that your lives as African American can be disrespected, taken from you, and without any without just cause and no price to pay. A white police officer who was caught on camera killing a man received a two-year sentence while a young black man faces seven years in prison after videotaping a cop on duty. Perhaps another reason why now, more than ever, there should be more eyes and perhaps more cameras on the police. In Los Angeles, Ramon Galindo, RT. He didn't just kick the cell phone, he also stomped on it, according to this woman. She's an elementary school teacher, Beatrice Paez. She was out on a stroll on Sunday, just out exercising, and she saw some police activity in her neighborhood. She said the first thing she thought of were the confrontations that were caught by citizens in South Carolina and New York. So she whipped out her cell phone and started recording. She was four to five houses away. One of the officers broke away from the police incident, approached her, told her to stop recording. She said, hey, look, Look, I'm on a public sidewalk. Here's how she says all of this unraveled. Then I kind of moved this way because I wanted to protect the phone, the footage. And he yanked it from me. He dropped it on the ground. He stomped on it many times, kicked it, and kicked my bottle, broke it. And then he said, there's your phone. It's illegal to take my picture. No, it is. It's a public property. It's illegal to take my picture personally. It's illegal. Did no, you get any documentation? I'm allowed you to take my picture? No, no but you're on public property. No, I'm Therefore, not. I'm on you state have property. no reasonable I'm on state property. You have no reasonable expectation. Be quiet. I got the camera. That's a Honolulu police officer as he grabs a 25 year old Palolo man and throws him onto the pavement, sending him to the hospital. This is the type of uh, message that's being sent to the community that the police officers can assault someone with impunity uh, and something has to be done about it. It happened in Palolo Valley. Mashashek and several friends were waiting for his uncle to make them lunch when officers said he rolled up on them. They say the attack was unprovoked. What, you want to record me too? Cool. While it was in my friend's hand, he grabbed the phone, then I grabbed the phone, and I pulled it away. I said, hey, man, this is my phone. That constitutes trying to destroy evidence. Kathleen Lee, on, on April 15th, ABC7 investigative reporter McCarran and her photographer were checking out a tip about questionable use of police and government resources in Prince George's County. They were following a county government car driven by a police officer who appears to be a full-time driver for the county's chief administrative officer. McCarran was driving. Photographer Pete Haeckel was in the back seat. Suddenly, they heard the wail of police sirens and saw flashing police lights. Back at ABC 7, managing editor Dan Patrick heard a call on the Prince George's County Police Scanner. Prince George's County Police were stopping a vehicle they said had, uh, was suspicious in nature and because there was someone videotaping them. When we first heard sirens and saw flashing lights, we assumed it wasn't us. And then all of a sudden, we're surrounded. She's got a gun pulled on there. Okay, that's right, that's right. My shoulder felt like it was on fire. McCarran's shoulder was wrenched from its socket. But she I'm may have to have surgery. Drop the cab line up here. Yes, sir. Right. Meanwhile, our photographer had problems of his own. At least three officers had their weapons trained on him. Just keep backing up towards down to my voice. Just keep holding I'm back. I'm a backing. I'm a backing. It's an obvious case of law enforcement intimidation. Prince George's County Police have refused our repeated requests for interviews. We've also requested dashboard videotapes from the nine police cruisers on the scene, but we've been told that every single one of the federally required cameras was either inoperable or not running. Leon? He said to me, you want to, so you want to film things, you want to film things, B, I should have knocked your teeth out. Makia Smith claims she was just attempting to record how Baltimore City police were handling a juvenile when an officer threatened her and eventually destroyed her cell phone. I was trying to get some pictures on my phone of it, trying to film it, trying to take pictures, trying to do anything. I didn't get a chance to do anything. <laughs> she was arrested and spent 24 hours in central booking. What alarmed me the most was one of the officers um, actually had his knee down on um, pressed against the kid's temple. She took out her phone and that drew the attention of one of the officers. I just opened my car door. I didn't move from my car. My car door was still open. Um, and I just 
held my camera up. The officer came over and told her to get back into her car. She told him she was trying to make sure the boy was not being hurt. When I proceeded to get in the car, he yanked my camera, my phone, out of my hand and kicked it and stomped it. I was trying to get my other foot in the car. I wasn't even given a chance to when he grabbed me by my hair and um, pulled me out of the car. It wasn't bad enough that they violated her first, fourth, and eighth amendment rights. They destroyed her cell phone. They charged her with second degree assault of an officer. They charged her with multiple traffic offenses. The city state's attorney's office declined to prosecute. The Baltimore Police Department is already embroiled in a case that's still pending in federal court. Christopher Sharp claims police seized his cell phone in 2010 and erased video he recorded of a woman being arrested at the Preakness. I feel as though that if I have to follow the law, the police, the, the police officers also have to follow the law. But now, Makia Smith says if she sees anything else that bothers her, she's just going to mind her own business. This is unedited videotape. APD says a driver and officers exchanged gunfire at Hopper and Rhode Island this morning. At 3.30 a.m., our photographer approached these two police cars at Copper and Grove. He was told he had to go to a media staging area, but the officers would not tell him where that was, so he just moved back. Here you can see the two officers briefly talk, and then one of them comes and tells our photographer where to go. Charleston is uh, central, and uh, Rhode Island is where you need to be nowhere else. Was that so hard? Was that so hard? Could I get your name? Can I get your name? And your badge number, sir? It's not asking that much. The officer walks away, then briefly looks at her photographer, then walks out of frame while the other officer begins to drive away from the scene. The photographer then begins to put his camera into his news vehicle when the officer begins circling around. I'm not putting the camera down until you hit me. Hey, we're rolling, bud. We're rolling. You hit me. It's all on camera. This is against the law. Quit it. You break a $50,000 camera. Hey, 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 hey. I'm not doing anything. Put your camera up. No. It's the only thing that protects me, ma'am. I'm not putting my camera. I asked you nicely. What, are you going to arrest me now? No, no. For a sec. Uh, excuse me? Just see your camera for a second. Uh, no. Why is that? Because it's mine. Yeah. You need a warrant. You need a warrant. Yes. May I please see your camera? I'd like to see what you video. No. Changed. No. Sorry. Okay. Well, how much have you had to do? Not too much. Barely too much. much. And I'll just come to my friend's house here. I'm yeah. here. Can you right. turn that away from me, please, sir? Turn it off. Come away from me. There's okay. no law against it. Actually, I'm on my own property. You're on my property. Actually, can I ask you to get off of it, please? No, please oh. Well, Denise, the woman tells me in this exclusive interview that she still has emotional scars from that night, and she does not believe that there would be any sort of investigation of this officer's actions if her daughter had not retrieved that cell phone video from her Dropbox after she says it was deleted by police. In March, Kianga says she was driving home when she saw a man in handcuffs on the ground. She pulled out her phone and started recording. You telling me I can't record? Somebody, like, smack, slammed on my car. And then they just all bum rush my car. She says she is tasered in her back as she is violently ripped from her vehicle. Hey. Oh my God, are you serious? You said yes. Okay. yes, you a dumb what you know that? It? In a statement, Baltimore police officials say, quote, the video does not capture enough information to draw a definitive conclusion about what transpired before and during the arrest. In the statement of probable cause, the officer claims Kianga accelerated and hit an officer, and he yelled for her to stop. But attorneys say and none of that is evident in the two-minute long video. If this video was not able to be preserved, she may very well be in prison right now. Now, Kianga was arrested and charged with assaulting an officer, which is a felony. Those charges have been dropped. He also noticed that Vang was speaking into his phone, which thought in his process was it may be an, an oral uh, type of a communication going into the phone. Um, when he went over to verify that with Vang, he said he had been. And it was just at that point he was simply arrested for the interception of communications. It's not that anybody's hiding anything. It's that it's there for the protection of everybody involved. So nothing is miscommunicated or misunderstood as far as the oral, con oral communication, as far as what's going on. 
When Jermaine Green and his fiance Violet Roberts got on a Metro bus in Bellflower Monday night, they took notice of another passenger. The lady got on the bus with her stroller full of pillows and she was very polite, said hi to everybody and sat down. At the next stop, two LA County Sheriff's deputies, one male and one female, boarded the bus and called the passenger by name. They said get off the bus and you can tell it's, it's very obvious that she was uh, special, you know, has special needs. And uh, after that, you know, they grab her and she cusses him out, calls him a big shot. Next thing you know, he gives her a big shot. Green captured the incident with his cell phone's video camera. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, he seen me taping him and he looked, he looked up at the camera a few times and he still hit her like that. Green recently returned home from serving six years in the Army, including tours of duty in Iraq and Afghanistan. This lady didn't do anything. She was not combative and he actually turned combative on her. Green claims the deputies then try to intimidate him when he refused to hand over his cell phone. And he comes to me and says, look, you can be under arrest if you don't give me that video. And then he said, do you have any warrants? I said, no, I don't have any warrants. I'm a veteran. I just came back. I did six years. I have no record. And he said, well, we'll see about that. An L.A. County Sheriff's Department spokesman told us he would not look at the videotape, but they do investigate all use of force claims. Found it, yeah, Janice, Derek, you could call this a case of mistaken identity. One, for undercover officers who thought they'd nabbed their wanted fugitive. And for this college student, he was on his way to work at, his t at the time, and he had no idea that he was on the receiving end of law enforcement. Well, they were pounding his fat head for no reason. They were. They, they were being brutal. This is how the day ended for then 21-year-old James King, the afternoon of Friday, July 18th, 2014. They were out of control pounding him. But this is how it began. The former Grand Valley State student says he was walking to work that summer afternoon two years ago when he saw two men leaning against a black SUV near Leonard Northwest in Tamarack Avenue. Those men were GRPD Detective Todd Allen and FBI Special Agent Doug Brownbeck. They were undercover, plain clothed and unshaven in jeans and baseball hats, according to court documents. The two were working for a joint task force looking for this guy, fugitive Aaron Davison. Wanted for home invasion, he'd been spotted in the area previously. And this seven-year-old driver's license picture and Facebook photo of him, all the two undercover officers were working off of, along with a vague description of a 26-year-old white man standing between 5'10 and 6'3. They didn't find Davison that day, but they did find King. The undercover officers asked King for ID, but he didn't have it. And never once identifying themselves, King thought he was being mugged. He was tackled to the ground, saying he was choked unconscious. Officer Allen later testifying he beat King as hard, as fast, and as many times as he could. I know they were pounding him. Coming to and screaming for passerbys to call 911. I want to point out, you're seeing the aftermath in these videos, and that is because we were told that no video of the alleged assault in action actually exists. King's attorney is telling me that's because an officer on scene demanded that bystanders delete those videos. The crew was in a public place, but police and San Diego and San Onofre security demanded that we delete the video. But we didn't, and 10 News investigator Mitch Blocker wants to show it to you. Mitch? Yeah, guys, we were working on a series of stories that were critical of San Onofre and its management. We were getting shots of the facility from a public state beach when police and San Onofre staff demanded that we delete our video and leave. We were in the process of airing and preparing several stories about the plant, which has been idle for more than a year because of a radiation leak. Our reports revealed how nuclear experts and insiders felt restarting the plant was risky. They uncovered this picture showing plastic bags, duct tape, and broomsticks used to seal a leaky industrial pipe inside the plant. What do you mean we're not allowed to film? As per my boss. How can you tell us we're not allowed to film on a public beach? Hey, uh, and you, you need to roll somebody down here. When we told Warman we had the right to shoot on public property, he called for backup. In the distance and off camera, you can hear State Park's policeman, Inyo Roca, coming toward us. He immediately identified himself as a State Park's police officer. What's your name? Officer Roca. Officer Roca. Nice to meet you, sir. He asked for ID and ran a background check on our crew. As the camera rolled, it captured more than the signature twin domes of the nuclear facility. It watched a man go fishing and a woman walk her dog, all in the same spot where we had apparently been trespassing. They called us down here because they said there's people filming a nuclear generator. 
it's a high terrorist threat, they take it very seriously. Roca told us the FBI was being dispatched, though they never showed up. Okay. Being detained. They're going to come down here, mm -hmm. you're going to explain your story, they're going to look at your footage. Eventually, a San Onofre employee dressed in SWAT gear told us to delete our video and leave the area. I'm on the boardwalk here at Mission Beach, where an incident involving a cigarette and this cell phone has launched a national debate. Put that way, please. No, thank you. This is video shot by Adam Pringle three weeks ago as he's cited for smoking on the boardwalk. For a minute, Pringle refuses to shut off his cell phone camera after this officer asks him several times. I have a right to film this. I'm in a public spot. Telephones can be converted into weapons. This is not a weapon. There is no way this could be a weapon. Okay, no, you will not. Soon after, Pringle says his phone was slapped out of his hand before he was tackled by the officer writing him the ticket. Pringle was arrested for disorderly conduct. I'm just an ordinary citizen. I was on my way to the movies, and all of a sudden, I'm facing a felony in 15 years in prison. Louis Frobe calls it the worst experience of his life. He was on his way to a late evening movie on an August night last year when he was stopped for speeding in far north suburban Lindenhurst. Louis didn't believe he was in a 35 mile an hour zone and he figured if he was going to get a ticket, he wanted to be able to document his challenge with video evidence. So he got out this pocket camera, which he was not real adept at using. At one point, he held it out the window trying to record where he was. When the officer, being recorded on his squad dash cam, walked back to Louis's car, the officer saw Louis's camera. Louis Frobe is then cuffed and arrested for felony eavesdropping. I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified. I was begging him. I said, I didn't know about this law. Would you please take the camera? It's like, this is no big deal and smash it. I was like, you know, I didn't know about the law. You gotta be kidding me. Louis spent a night in the Lake County Jail, was released on bond the next day. And they had audio and they had uh, video on me, but I'm not allowed to do it to them. I'm in a private car on a public street and it's a public official. Why shouldn't I be able to record w what's going on so I can prove my, in uh, my innocence? The Attorney General's office argues that the case should be dismissed, that there's no constitutional standing here. But in a similar case, a circuit court judge in downstate Crawford County earlier this month declared the state's eavesdropping act unconstitutional. taking him? And right now he's being arrested because he resisted my authority. I told him to stop several times. Okay, well I have to tell you, you just committed a felony. Okay. Yeah, give me your phone. No. Then he gets in my car, in the passenger seat. Get out of my you are, car. You are committing a felony. Hand me the phone. No, I am not. I know the law better than you. Believe no. me. I will hand go me to the court. Phone. I'm not giving hand you my phone. Hand me the phone. phone. You're going to end up in jail if you don't hand me that phone. Tonight. I'm not giving you my Tonight. phone. Bernie was in the driver's seat with her phone when the deputy opened up the door, climbed in, and tried to take away her phone. Get off of my key right now. You are breaking the law. You no, I am not arrest. getting out of my car. Get off of me. After the arrest, O'Brien charged burning with traffic violations and resisting arrest, and she spent the night in jail. I had a bruise on my cheek, and my leg got cut. I have a scar on my leg, three large um, wound scrapes down my leg, and there was a rock lodged in my leg. And um, he had sprained my wrist. And it's not the first time for BSO. Former Deputy Paul Pletcher now faces criminal charges after allegedly smashing a woman's phone for videotaping him. In case you were wondering, after all the talk of her committing a felony, the lieutenant never even charged Burning with making an unlawful recording. Ah! Dude, look at him. Ah! Good evening. The man who used his cell phone to record the violent images says police tried to intimidate him. Donna's standing by now with investigative reporter Luke Moretti. Jackie, News 4 Investigates was first interviewed the suspect who says he didn't deserve to be hit while in custody. Now the man who took the video also has a story to tell. Yeah, Luke. Don, he does, and uh, it has a lot to do with what he says happened after he recorded the incident. Hit, 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 hit. 
from that officer over here. Take a closer look at the video. You can see an officer slapping, then kicking, then once again slapping Willett while he's on the ground handcuffed. Sources tell News 4 investigates that police believe the officer seen in the video striking Willett is Officer John Cerulli. Fearing the possibility of a reprisal, the man behind this video recording asked that his identity be protected. He tells us that he saw Willett surrendering to police in the area of Philadelphia and Ontario streets. The cop just came in and pushed him. He didn't even say a word. He just, he just knocked him down. He says that's when he began recording video. At one point, he says one of the officers noticed him taking pictures. One cop saw me. He, he, tapped, he tapped his friend on the shoulder. And he pointed at me, so I knew they were going to come to me. He says he quickly switched phones with a friend, knowing police were going to ask about the video. He says one of the officers, the same one seen on the video slapping and kicking Willett, confronted him about the video. He, he told me, give me your phone or I'm going to, I mean, delete the video or I'm going to take your phone as evidence. The man says he asked the officer if it was illegal for him to record. He says the officer did not answer the question. He, he, he just deleted it. I was like, okay, so I, I, gra I grabbed the phone, my first phone, and I deleted it, and I showed it to him. He said, thank you very much. He checked it to make sure it was gone. He said, thank you very much, and he left. There's two ways that this can go. Take that phone and stick it out of my face. I'm not going to tell you again. Right. I'm not okay. being committed with no crime, but, like, what's Listen, the problem with cause? My camera's bro? on, so don't worry about it. Yeah, we're Keep your hand out of it. Chill, 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 chill. Yo, cuz, you have me my yeah. phone, please, yeah. bro? I'm going to explain this one time and one time only. It's going to go two ways. You're going to have to get gentlemen. I'm going to treat you like a gentleman. You frog the fuck up. I guarantee you that 90 pound dog is going to come out. I'm going to rip the fuck out of you. Sir, and if your no hand problem. doesn't disappear, I'm going to knock you the fuck no out. Problems, Put your hand in my face. I'm going to knock you the fuck out. No I'm that fucking guy. You understand me? So calm the fuck down. Right, you feel me? Yes, sir. You'll, you'll go away. Real cool. Yes, sir. You start acting like a fucking fool, I will drag you out of this fucking window. You no, understand? Just be quiet, cuz. Just be quiet, bro. You're right, sir. You're absolutely right. I apologize. I'm not disrespecting you. You're you right. want to frog the fuck up? I got no problem. We'll step out and bang. Nah, I got no fucking problem. You don't got to do all that. It don't have to be It doesn't have to be like that. Just stop making it like that. I'm not. All I was trying to do was just grab my phone, sir. I like felt I, like... Like I told you. You're on lawful detention. You're not allowed to have your cell phone. You understand? You're not yes, allowed sir. to use it. So you can turn yours off right now. Otherwise, you're going to skip it right down the track. A Tennessee Highway Patrolman orders a photographer to erase his video, raising the question, who owns your video? An accident scene a Thursday morning on I-75. Trooper Clinton Pompey Tudors talked to one of our photographers and asked him to lead, delete the video from his news camera. News Channel 9's Josh Rowe joins us now with more on what happened, what it means, and details that you may remember about that trooper. Josh. Kim and Calvin, it happens every day. We see something interesting and pull out our cell phone to shoot video. For the news media, it works the same way, only the camera is a bit bigger. So once the video is recorded on your device, who does it belong to? And can law enforcement make you delete it? Thursday morning, News Channel 9 photographer Brett Frumhold was doing what he does most days, covering breaking news. This time, an accident scene with an injured driver on I-75 northbound. Tennessee Highway Patrol tells us they received a complaint that our news car was parked in the median. It should have been on the shoulder for safety. Out of the blue, I just hear a loudspeaker come up behind me, and I look behind me, and it's a state trooper, and he's telling me, get that camera, get that news car, and get out of here. Law enforcement officers often ask the media to change our location at a scene for a variety of reasons, including our own safety. What happened next? hardly ever happens. And then he said that I needed to delete my footage. I had never ha had, I've never had a cop tell me to do that before. And he said that if he saw the footage later on, that it would come back to me. So me being fairly new to this business, I felt like I should delete it. And I probably shouldn't have, because we'd be watching that rather than talking to me right now. The trooper who Frumhold was talking to, THP officer Clinton Pumpy Tudors, seen here in this video from 2007. We also reported criminal charges against Tudors for allegedly assaulting another man. Joe Brackett. When that case was settled on a pretrial diversion, Tudors was allowed to return to THP patrol. 
He was working Thursday when he came across from hold at that accident scene. All right, I'm going to tell you one time, okay? Have I, have I stop your recording? It's a felony. I'm telling you right this now. This is a public place. I'm no. When 18-year-old Ryan Seaman doesn't give the officer his name, he's arrested. It sounds like a possible retaliation by the police. Retaliation is a strong word, but that's what it is. I know of no, nothing in the law that says I can't record a conversation or an encounter with a police officer. Period. Ryan had an initial court appearance on March 10th. He pled not guilty. We asked the Radcliffe police several times over the last couple of weeks for a comment on camera, over the phone, or in writing, but they declined. Name is John Hotelling, and I don't know why I'm being pulled over. This cop saw me and uh, decided to pull me over for I don't know what reason. How's it going? Put the phone down. Put the phone down? Yeah. Why? Am I not allowed to record, officer? Am I not allowed to record, officer? Open your window. I can hear you just fine. Open your window. I can hear you just fine, officer. Can I have your badge number, please? Open your window. Can I have your badge number, please? Am I being detained? I'm stopping you for a traffic violation. Open your window, give me your license and registration. I will give you my license and registration. I'm gonna throw the cigarette out here. You the same one that thought it was a good idea to come to my station and videotape us for some reason? Am I legally obligated to answer that question? How about if I see you post this on YouTube, I'll find a way for the DA's office to arrest you. Is it illegal to record police officers? When I tell you to put the phone down and you disregard what I'm telling you, yes it is. So am I being detained for recording? Put the phone down. Is it illegal to record officers? Give me your registration. Okay. What is your issue of always videotaping? Am I legally obligated to answer that? You're obligated because I asked her. Then he says the officer noticed Bright was recording. Turn it off. I can keep turn recording. It turn it off and take I, it to jail. Sergeant Becker told me it was illegal to film the police, told me to turn it off or he would take me to jail. Bright did not stop. I know that he's just trying to coerce me to, to not film him anymore. As an attorney, Bright says he tells all his clients to record interactions with law enforcement. I didn't want to see anybody get fired or anything come of this. Um, I really just want people to understand their rights. Bright says his biggest concern yeah, yeah, is that this is happening often. If he's willing to just directly lie to me and tell me, you know, this is against the law to film the police, then it worries me. You know, most people, when they're given an order by an officer, they don't know that it's an unlawful order.